Yeah, so um, why don't we do, Mike, why don't we do mm-hmm. a couple of uh, Richard Herring random questions with uh, yes. Danny Boy? Oh, Danny Boy. We went to watch Richard Herring um, record his podcast live at the Leicester Theatre uh, a couple of weeks back. And part of the thing he does is throw random emergency questions at guests. So I've bought his book in the meantime, mm. so... I feel like I can use his material because I paid for this. That's fine. Sorry, Richard, if you're ever listening, which you're not, but whatever. (laughs) Um, So I'm going to dive straight into a random question. So, Dan, no pressure. The world is watching. If you had a tribe of Oompa Loompas living in your house or workplace, what would you make them do? And would you insist they sing songs or stay quiet? Sing songs. Already know that. Uh, And I'd like to have it to a drum and bass soundtrack. (laughs) <laughs> Throw my face on bloopers. And what would you, would it be at home or in work? Right now, I'm making me think work would make the best whiskey ever. There you go. So you'd, you'd have basically Charlie and the whiskey factory. Yeah. They would be going doing that because. Dan it, and the whiskey factory. There you go. Do yeah, you remember obviously. that movie? Fa- fan, is it, was it fan, fan, fa- Fantasia, Fantasia or something? Fantasia. I think that like Disney film. Yeah. It'd be like a drum bass version of that. Just cracking yes. all the time. That, no, that's it. When I, I remember years ago, the reason I say this I, they, I was um, at a ski resort out in France, uh, and they put on an Oompa Loompa's drum and bass remix. <laughs> Literally, I heard it. I'm like, that is amazing. <laughs> Obviously, I'm assuming I drunk a bit. Um, and I went searching for it after. Never found it since, but that is where that, that answer comes from. I want to hear that song again. It might, after a day, be a little bit irritating. Love it. But- Worth it. I love I love nineties drum and bass. It was really good. That's like, so um, good. All the break beats and stuff, and uh, like the really spaced out songs. There'll just be a song called like Helicopter. It's just drum and bass, and then occasionally they play a helico- the sound of a helicopter. Chopper, that's the whole song. Yeah, and it, uh, uh, Man of Steel. <laughs> you know they had just the, the <laughs> yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, I used to love that. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna I might have to dig it out. I used to have like a four album disc set. And then like another three album disc set. And that between it was something like probably like 130 songs, which is about as much classic 90s drum and bass as you need. You probably had 90% of all of the music that was out at that time. Yeah. There was one song that went... Summer days. <laughs> Drifting away. <laughs> and that was what my friend Johnny at uh, university he used to do what we called the broken back dance, where he would stand hunch over and drop his arms and just do like elbows up like that. And he'd just yep. do that for like four hours. Love it. That was all he did. Duncan, I've got one for you. Good question for you now. Uh, on, where do you see yourself in 500 years time? <laughs> Dead. Ah, right. Easy. Back to you, Dan. That was a real quick one. Um, if you owned a racehorse, what would you name it? Dan is freaking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> right. Dan, have you ever been fired? If so, what for? Have I ever been fired? No, I've only ever had like a load of official warnings. Not even by Buster Rhymes. Did he fire you up? <laughs> oh, oh, God. What's wrong with that? Love it. Actually, I wanted to say why I've been, like, why I've had official warnings. It probably, I don't think in the modern world they'd be acceptable. In the old days, they were funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't, I think it's done. I don't mean to explain that. Let's leave that to uh, listeners' imagination. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Last one. Um, what is your hometown's claim to fame? And what is your hometown where you grew up? Mine or Dunk? Uh, Dan. Um, hometown claim to fame, where I live right now and have, went to school, uh, has is the home of the UK's first ever martyr. Can ah. you even say UK? Can you say UK? UK? Otherwise, we can't include it. Yeah, 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 UK. Yeah. First ever martyr. First ever His martyr. Name was Saint Alban. Actually, no, his name was Alban, but he became saint. He became a saint. Yeah. yeah. And we, like, there's loads of bits, but it, I only know that because this weekend we had uh, the Alban procession weekend in St. Alban's. That's so funny because you grew up in the place of St. Alban and I grew up worshipping the saint of uh, All Bran. Oh, well, the cereal. Yeah. Did you have a trouble with it? The kid? Everyone just no, round my dad, a box, throwing shapes. My dad was obsessed crazy. with it. It's like he, it's like eating a whole box of just thick cardboard. Yeah. And um, wet. I, I, I was when as I was as I was growing up. If I if I needed to punish myself, if I'd maybe stepped out of line or 
you know, you I just, just throw have a bowl all of bran at your face really hard. No, I just have a, <laughs> just cry. I just have a, I just have a, I just have a bowl of it and just suffer through it and just go, just ground. It's a grounding experience because you could have had a nice slice of marmite and toast, but you're gonna suffer the bowl of all bran. Did you have a very uh, low fiber diet? in general no no he's yeah, having he loads of all brand thrown in his <laughs> face <laughs> the only i remember I, I it was my dad it was my dad's cereal like it wasn't i didn't i didn't i didn't go to my mum. hey can you get some more all brand i love it i just I ate old brown once as a kid i ate an entire box because the doctor told me i had to <laughs> <laughs> right that's it so what you, you were projecting when you said do did i have a fiber problem yeah, what yeah. you're saying it's is like, you why, had why, a why fiber did anyone problem? else drink it or eat it sorry because that's why i ate it <laughs> no no i just um you know, it's yeah. I I I ate it to punish myself. <laughs> I think that's what the doctor did to My me. My dad probably ate it for the reasons you're talking about, yeah. right? Yeah, probably. I'll stick with, with frosties. I used to sneak some cocoa cocoa pops onto it just to make it more interesting. Half <laughs> cocoa pops, half all bran. If it was a- I don't like sugar added cereals. Mm-hmm. So Weetabix was my favourite growing up. So you um, were blending cereals as a young child, Duncan. There was a, the the the. the, the <laughs> There's the no rules. There's no, in the, stars. the only rules. The only rules in life are the ones you set for you. The ones you, you know, just who cares? Like, just do what you feel like. <laughs> just got four tablespoons of all bran, two cocoa pops, and then uh, ricicles. Don't forget Cheerios as well for a little bit of. <gasps> yeah, I, I've got a question for you, Dan. If um, we did an episode about two things tasting, if two, if one, if something tastes great on its own, mm. it will also taste great. Um, you know, if two things taste great on their own, they also taste great together. So uh, I was talking to my mate who challenged me and said, well, would ketchup and ice cream taste great? And no. I said, well, I said, well, no, I easy. know from first hand experience. If you put them on chips, though, would it not be OK? No, uh, it no. depends with the garlic content of the ketchup. Right. The higher <laughs> garlic content, the worse they go together. Yeah. <laughs> so. I, 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 as a kid, I had ketchup with everything and I tried it with everything. I tried right. Vianetta, tried it with vanilla ice cream. That's and, actually disgusting, Dan. I'm, yeah, it was. Ketchup with Vianetta. It's, but it's the garlic content of the ketchup that is the worst part of that mix. I so, feel yeah, like, how did that happen? That wasn't a purpose that you've like, right, I really need some Vianetta and I've only got a used plate and there's tomato ketchup on there. And no, I... Serious. I it's interesting you should say that because I'm actually currently pitching garlic free ketchup to some very large entrepreneurs in London. Yeah. Yeah. Is it your kids? <laughs> <laughs> I've only got one kid and she's not old enough to make an investment. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what it's sounding like. Yeah. I'm not but speaking it, to her yet. Yeah. But it, it's that it, I, I, I went through years of loving to experiment. So I, I can tell you some really, like, that's not the weirdest. Like, a, yeah. What's, what, a go pint for it. A frosty jack. With a shot of absinthe, the two flavors neutralize each other out and they almost taste like water. Three shots of absinthe to a pint of Frosted Jacks tastes like a pint of absinthe and is vile. Just on the just on the pint of Frosted Jack with a shot of absinthe, drink responsibly, folks. <laughs> yeah, stick to the two shots, not the three. Yeah, just, just the one shot, two shots or three shots is irresponsible in well, that pint. Two of, uh, generally Jack. still works, three is too far, but... Any mixing with Frosty Jacks is a bad idea. I'm just making a note in my... Uh, in Other my, ciders uh, are available. I'm just making a note to say if Dan invites on a lad's night out just to uh, no, no, avoid no, no, the no. Frosty Jacks. Avo- yeah, just well, If we go careful. back to the only thing, I'm now drinking three to four percent beers. Yeah, true. Uh, <laughs> a little bit strong. <laughs> right. I'm going to throw another question at you. and I'm not giving you any time to think about it. So three drams in a pub. What are they? What you would like to see on the bar? If you walked into a Did, random pub somewhere, what would you want to I, see? So it's not ones that you standardly see. It's just what you'd really enjoy. If you were like to walk in a pub, you'd be like, I'd like a blend. I'd like something. What What would you want to see on there? Yeah, no, what, just what you want. Yeah. Just, just I, literally what you I want. want. Like, or, you, or just be selfish. You go into a pub, I you don't care about anyone else. I just what you meters. want. I want, a, that's what I want is my American whiskey. I want a mix because you always know you're going to get great whiskey out of that. Amazing. It doesn't choice. matter which one it is. Sour mash, the, the rye, mm. lovely. You've always got to have a good American whiskey, I think. Then you've got to have really, really good scotch. And I really like Bunners. Yeah. Right. And, it, it, and, and if it's for a good value as well, Bunner 12. Simple, gets there, delicious. 
and then I want something really random and just different. Uh, uh, at the moment, I'm thinking, because we talked about Baines earlier, Baines, one of their 18-year-olds, that one of their yeah. the Fino cask. I've got the Fino cask at home. I love the Fino's good. All their all their single casts are super hard to get hold of. Something like that. Really just when you go like, oh, well, I can't <laughs> that that So Dan, Ooh. Dan, not not SE eleven then. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'll end this bit how he's been a twat. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what's it, wrong with that well, it's, no, there's loads why. of whiskey available in the world it can't be everything can't be the best whiskey Dan's just going what he fancies when he goes down the pub I'm well, just saying because I want a pub just to have an everyday general select generally selection that's more like that but yeah, yeah. if I was really going to pick a pub uh, my, my, lo- my local you went there Dan didn't you last year Red Lion like, top pub top pub in yeah we we put a couple of uh, bottles behind the bar so that um there's always a really, really good selection behind it and stuff you just wouldn't expect. Like they've got an SMWS um, Glen Scotia oh, nice. behind the bar. Yeah. Someone will walk, yeah, someone will walk um, in there and be like, what the hell? I was actually a bit disappointed that I understand it's a lot of work that you didn't have that St. Albans Whiskey Festival again this year. I understand you, you might do it next year. It was really good fun. Yeah, it's going like, to be every two years is the way. Yeah, to be honest, there was meant to be a virtual festival this year. But it got uh, the the brands that were part of it pulled out. All oh, right, and it's it's really difficult. I, I don't think we're going to have virtual festivals anymore because the investment from brands is just too high, and that's what those sipping sessions. Well, the first one I've done here. Oh, okay, recently, yeah. That's our trying to offer something that everyone can do. Yeah. Is, uh, it's what I learned from. Like, I, I never thought the virtual. I never thought we did two virtual festivals. A time and a place. But we had well, we had people in the Outer Hebrides as part of it. We had an, uh, someone who's got agoraphobia. We hadn't been to a whiskey event in like eight or nine years. Nuts, got it? to it. Yeah, and then you realise that that there is this requirement for a for an online event, but it's just got to be Dude, like that. Like twenty twenty one, you you were like you saved Christmas. Do you know what I mean? You saved whiskey that year. Um, yeah. I just got really annoyed. No one else was doing anything. They just all I kept on hearing was everything that was cancelled. You're like, but why? Oh, right. Why yeah. don't you create something? And I was actually really worried for the small brands because mm. at that point, no one knew what was going to happen. The only way small brands got out was to go via retailers, and the retailers put the effort into them. All shops are shut. Yeah. What's going to happen to the f- the innovation, the fun? the novelty in, in what we enjoy. So that was a big part of why I did the first yeah. one. Little did I know that lockdowns are the best thing ever for small distilleries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But oh. at the, I, I had a different, I, I didn't know that was going to happen. So it was that I don't like that all of our whiskey funds taken away. I don't like that all these small distilleries have lost their, their way of talking to people and I don't want to lose them. Mm. Why is no one else making an effort? No, it was good. All right. That that came. Yeah, that was a just brilliant. I can't remember what time of year it was. May. Was it May? Our first one was May. The second was March. Yeah. I yeah. Oh, hang on. Are we still are we still can, still talking about going to St Albans to Red Lion or something? No. Else? This is oh, the this is virtual. Some of the virtual. Uh, virtual oh right. We 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 survived through uh, COVID by organising like a weekly pub quiz with uh, lots of friends online. Yeah. We every, each week someone would take it in terms to come up with a Did quiz. That not get, I got bored um, after like week three. I was like. No, it, it was really quite good fun, actually. We had people on from all over the world and, you know, everyone did a good quiz every week and it was at least something to do, wasn't it? Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, it was really just... nice to have to wait that split second in conversation. I just, it's that that lack of actually, one, I'm looking at you in the eyes. Yeah. But you can't see that I'm looking at you in the eyes. I'm talking to you, but you don't know I've stopped because I might just to stop for a split second carried on but you're now and now i've just overridden yeah. all of mm. that i hate yeah Wait, the, the quality's got a lot better uh mm. of recent but I, but I know exactly what you're saying it's um it's not the same right it's hanging out in person is it come on it's a long way away from it that's why i was asking about the uh the whiskey festival it's a really good one because the red line is such a good venue and it's like it was beautiful in the garden it was like sunny it was not too big you had some stools around just food outside then you had the masterclass with all the whiskey tastings in, you know inside and 
in the pub and it was kind of cozy. It was really good. Like it, it, it's perfect, but um, it is months of hard work. Grief. And I don't have st- I can't afford because st- I don't agree with some of the prices we we get, we get charged for stuff. Mm. Yeah. The only way I can not charge that is if I don't have staff. And that means I have to do all the work myself. Yeah. So it's a graft, isn't it, basically? Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. So you, you saw on the day that like, I spoke to you for about two minutes. I'm trying to give everyone like half an hour because I want to speak to everyone because mm. most people I know from social media, they're members and stuff, and I want to have a conversation. I haven't met you in real life, but I'm running around making sure there's enough glasses over on that table. Yeah. The water's uh, topped up everywhere. The so-and-so who brought a kid is respectful because kids aren't allowed in that pub the everyone's going to go and do that tasting and then that room's cleaned up afterwards and all the other question it's that i'll do it but i just can't do it every year yeah. it no. takes quite a lot out yeah. Of yeah 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 maybe you can get someone to help with the festival next year rather it's not just no, on you then i've got to put up prices no i mean without i mean there might be some there might be someone good-hearted who's willing to actually help you without oh, charging for it to next year yeah <laughs> I might be able to put a little bit, a little bit of work. The in honest there. to a malt whiskey festival. You heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> the Saint, the Saint Albans takeover. Yeah. yeah, do it, do it. I'm more than happy to help someone else run a run an event. Hey, it's mate, there's, only, there's not enough people listening to the podcast to. Uh, to, to... <laughs> you ain't covering the gate, mate. <laughs> yeah. so, I I did have a bat. If it all went wrong, and like it's been, and uh, and we couldn't run it, I was just going to hire the back room in the pub. Bring a load of bottles, and we're just going to sit there and just tell everyone. Sesh. Yeah, just everyone bring a bottle. I'll make sure that there's more than enough that everyone's got something random to try, and we just chat. Yeah. And that, I, I, I think there's something massive in that idea, but it's you have to pay for the venue because you're never going to. Or if you're buying drinks on top of all that whiskey, yeah. you're in trouble. Uh, and then mm. so the venue, and then also now you've got to charge people, or you've got a do it off your own and it just no, you know you got you see dan you got to get you got to get prepared for a whiskey festival in the right way i've been to whiskey festivals with different people and my top tip borrowed of someone is basically go to greg's and have about four large sausage rolls before you get on the sauce yeah <laughs> just, <laughs> just just uh sure two's enough no, uh, probably four. four yeah four yeah have four, four yeah, you haven't rolls. done the cheeseburger challenge mm, no, it's how many can you fit in your mouth one at a time like in a minute you need that to sounds do, ridiculous. Just a while, like is, a bog standard McDonald's cheeseburger. Yeah, and but the the, re, the reason it's good is for a festival. I can't think of a better prep. Yeah, <laughs> this could go really that. wrong though. Well, I mean, yeah. I my preference usually is to have like I don't know, like, like a tuna sandwich or something like that. But if you're going to go and have a lot, you need to you need to oh, eat something like greasy. a tuna sandwich. That's what you. That's exactly what you had when I left you the other day, wasn't it? You. You left the uh, Leicester Square Theatre in Leicester Square Area and you went and found a tuna sandwich. Healthy tuna sandwich. I was in, Mike, I was in Five Guys yeah. for a long time asking about their tuna sandwich selection. And they kept saying, do you want everything on yes. that? What, with the bacon? I want, I want beef but, yeah. burgers with my tuna sandwich, please. Yes, yes. Do you put it's... tuna in the shakes as well? <laughs> when you go to Five Guys and, they, and then you're reminded that it costs close to 11 quid for a burger... And then they go, do you want chips? And you're like, no, 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 no I no. don't. Not now, no. Especially as the, the, the specialist burger joint that's, that's 20 meters away is charging nine pounds yeah. and gives you chips. And you're like, but, but do you know, yeah. that's the best place in town. But, but I think I if, it, if, you know an, if you know an area, it's all very well. Because like my idea would be to go and get a shish kebab with all the Ooh. works on it. But then you've got to know where there's a good shish kebab place. That would be my, uh, my yeah. ideal. Yeah. But you know, it's hit and miss, isn't it? With with uh drunken takeaway that type of thing. Mm. Yeah, exactly, right? But the best thing about five guys is you get to have bacon in your shakes. Ooh. That that's it. And when they make the bacon freshly in front of you and they go, it's not crispy enough yet. Yeah, like, oh you know what I want. Like, I've wow. never had bacon in a shake no, at five guys. 
Oh, you have to. I like it. It changed my world, and then it's also why I'm not allowed to go back because <laughs> there's only so much unhealth you can put in your body on a day. You were talking about units. I just I like to. I like to think that's not what happened. I think that that's not what happened. Basically, they didn't do the bacon in the right way, and you yeah. pulled it off. I was like, I'm not allowed back. It was a full on because I full on I fight with like the seven staff too much. members. That's why I'm not allowed back. That's all the same. <laughs> Stand screaming. You like bacon, peanut butter. Make it crispy. Mole. These aren't things that all should go together, but I'm having them. So what just what they specifically put in it there? Like bacon with what? What bacon and strawberry strawberry milkshake with bacon, is that what you're saying? You you get to pick the ingredients. Right. So you can have peanut butter, you can have malt, you know, like you get the malt drinks, you gherkins. Huh? Gherkins. Sure they will. I haven't seen that. I doubt it, but... Do people just go to, like, Five Guys then and just challenge each other to have the most disgusting milkshake ever made? Is that what they do? No, because you can't have a disgusting milkshake there. Yeah. All the ingredients are great. You put more together and you're like, I didn't know they mixed so well. I mean, it just mixes well. You Again, you're going back to the thing that random flavours work together, which is yeah. fair enough. We once did, when we were really young, we went into McDonald's. When, do you remember when McDonald's was doing that? extra extra large like the, the disgusting portion yes. sizes they did for a while which they then stopped when it was like super a size. and they did a super size milkshake and i went in uh with a friend uh, with some friends and one of the one of my mates uh sean he we had a milkshake off and we saw who could drink a super sized milkshake in the fastest time through the straw by the way only through the straw single straw and i think i won in a time of around 11 minutes and 10 seconds and that was the fastest I could drink a super sized McDonald's thick shake for a straw. As you know. And the ice cream the ice cream headache was like an absolute sledgehammer. I enjoy taking stories and then topping them. That's what that's something I do. So on that right. same skiing trip I mentioned earlier in Canada, um, we were in a bar and there was a drinking challenge that came up. And I'm an idiot when I'm drunk, and I will just not back down to any sort of challenge that someone puts in front of me. And it was up on stage to do a gallon of chocolate milkshake That's for a hundred Canadian dollars. And uh, there was me, an English lad. That's four and a half. That's four and yeah, a half pints. Me, an English lad and a uh, American. And yeah, I was the first person that's ever finished it. And they went, give me my money. And they were like, we haven't even got the money. I went, you better go and find it. <laughs> <laughs> got my money. And then spent two days throwing up. <laughs> like it it I know that. was. I don't know if you've seen the episode of Jackass where they do something similar with milk. Uh, I'm like, yeah. oh yeah, my it. God, I was in. You can't, you bits. can't even have that much volume no. in, that, in that time. My stomach's never we, been the same since, but we, it's worth it. We, it's, yeah. it's worth it. <laughs> it's worth a hundred dollars they had to scrape together. 50 quid or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Partly for environmental reasons, we've had a milk off in our house <laughs> i i used to work for uh dairy chris and i had to get some bottles for a photo shoot and they asked for them empty and i couldn't in the time get them empty so i had to get full ones and empty them so i'm not i'm not throwing all this milk away that's disgusting that's just wasteful <laughs> so five of us tried to see if we could drink 140 pints <laughs> <laughs> And we all no, you cannot. no, we can't. But we all got to the point where we were sick. So we tried. In what, in what time period? Dan, in what time period? An evening. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, it, I, it wasn't even a challenge. It was just just drink as much as you can because I can't throw this all away. This is disgusting. Yeah. For context, have you ever done like have you ever done where you have to have a like a like a can, like a five hundred bill can or a pint every hour? Centurion like challenge. Yeah. Oh no! Well, have you ever done the Centurion yeah. challenge? Yeah, I, I struggle with that because it's too slow. A shot of beer well, it, every minute for a hundred minutes. It, I've not it, done that one, but I've done a pint every hour, and 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 that's difficult near the end because one, you get fed up of drinking it, and two, you just your body just fed up of the yeah. volume, right? What? So I can't imagine twenty, one hundred and forty divided by five. It's like. 20, we did not have 20 pints each. I can tell 24 you. 24 pints each. We, that. that would be 24 pints each. Yeah, we didn't. Yeah. We we, we struggled to get for a six pinter each. Yeah. On oh, my days. But, um, yeah, no, it's, it's it, it, there, there was an environment. I, I do care. Like, hopefully you saw from the packaging you got. Uh, yeah. For our thing. Yeah, I, I mentioned that. I, 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 maybe mm. I missed that bit out of the wrap, but um, 
you know, basically it's good packaging. It's all cardboard, paper, and glue. That's pretty much it. I really care about all of that kind of stuff. Uh, and it does impact my choices. And I did stupidly because of it start a sample subscription um, out of anger. Um, is that the one with the um, the Pioneer stuff? Or is that yeah, yeah Whiskey Pioneer it was someone that might be quite a lot bigger was saying that their packaging was because they cared about the environment. Right. And knowing that that packaging never breaks down and they aren't part of the really expensive recycling scheme. Now, that's rubbish. Yeah. And I was told mm-hmm. I'm not allowed to call it out because I'm in the industry. Like, sod it. Piss me off that much. I'll create my own thing and I'll show you that you can have a sample subscription that doesn't increase all the problems we have in the world. Yes, that yeah, beauty. The best bottle ever. Yeah, yeah, we've got loads of it because they use it in blind yeah. rams. I've yeah. got I've got tons of them. But, what I do is usually is I either recycle them myself so I don't post them back or I send them with whiskey into other people yeah, to enjoy. Send them on. That's what they should be used for. Keep using them again and again and again yeah. because they are they're durable enough. And even if you recycle them, it's not a problem because that plastic would be in our oceans otherwise. Mm. So if they just have just a question for you though, if they slightly discolor at the top, like is it still okay? Say so if they've been left in it best had be because I've been reusing them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's just it's just a thought that I've had because I've had them sent to me with discolor and I've been reluctant to send them discolored to people. So then I just recycle them. No, but it's just a genuine question as to whether the plastic has still got its integrity or not. It still has its integrity, but it's, I believe it's become a touch more brittle. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, that's not a problem. It's, it's really to do with how it mixes with um, whether it's breaking down or not. It doesn't no, matter no. if it's more brittle. Yeah. It doesn't break down in, in, into the whiskey. The, the whole point of that plastic is that it is completely food grade. It It's not the cheapest because yeah. they make it so good now it's being like it's now starting to be used by waitrose little sainsbury's and their products so it definitely is safe they will. right i literally i literally posted off to uh to nick gasquid or a fellow What's online going? five five uh 50 60 you know the 60 more bottles so it's probably like i probably did like 55 in each bottle and then gave it a little squeeze yeah. um, the magic squeeze today in yeah. the in the so. in the second class envelope large envelope size you know yeah uh, for whatever it is on, on royal mail and you know you don't get asked if you post it in that size but if they do ask obviously you say beard oil right uh, you know, or, olive oil uh, whatever herbs. Olive, even, yeah, herbs, yeah. yeah potpourri <laughs> yeah. it's drugs uh it's just straight up yeah, drugs drugs yeah. drugs. Oh, yeah, right. it's drugs yeah as long as it's not sharp yeah. don't care <laughs> you actually are allowed to say whiskey you just then you then it's only supposed to be two maximum two but then they then insist on writing fragile all yeah. over it and you're like oh i've already packed it anyway it doesn't matter yeah. you know yeah. that's why yeah, like- you now go on the royal mail you get your thing uh you pay for it online and the postman comes to your house takes the package off you and puts a sticker on himself you don't even need to go near a post box you have to sp- not for me i i just anyone. use it as an excuse to walk i use it as an excuse to walk the dog out. i just take the dog down the road to the post office it's like 20 minute walk yeah, I'm not taking. I really, I, I don't, I'm not very good with modern advances in anything. There's a reason I have to have staff. Uh, <laughs> and I, yeah, I, I people keep telling me the postman will pick up stuff from my house. So that like, yeah, but it's a twenty minute walk to the post office. Oh, no, sure, yeah, it's just, just going it's a twenty second walk <laughs> to the door. Yeah, it is. Like, yeah, my housemate does. He does. He's a lot of with fragrance, and he's always in and out. He's like a collector of it. Oh, really? Yeah, of fragrance. Is there money to be made? Yeah. Like Duncan's like, well, I do like a fragrance. No, well, no, I, just, I don't want to. I don't want to keep anything else. Start flipping CK one. <laughs> yeah. well, I, I was on a tasting with Colin Dunn years ago. It's one of the first ones where I learned, and I learned so much. And he went, "Well, whiskey is the same as perfume. It's an organic aromatic particle." Yeah. Oh, actually, yeah, it is because perfume is alcohol. It's got a smell. Yeah, this is alcohol. It's got a smell, and to be honest, there's some of these I'd be very happy to smell of. <laughs> Splash it on you. Yeah, you heard it here first. Dan's just splashing that's on his, his favorite drama in the morning. Excuse when he comes in the office. Oh no, I've been over to Cologne out of the whiskey me. now. I wasn't dramming yeah. last night. That's just the scent of yeah. success. Some some guys some guys Dan, you stink. Dan's like, well, you be asked. Of course, I stink. It's Tamdu yeah. today. To, today, I'm wearing Tamdu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you smell the potatoes, it's a problem. <laughs> yeah. uh, How do you get potatoes out of whiskey? Don't know. Still happens. 
Oh, dear me. Oh, right. We are rocking up past two hours and 15 minutes. Yeah, well, there's loads that there's quite a lot to cut out. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's only about 15 minutes yeah, you're going to use. You're like, hello. We have some Canadians <laughs> on. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> How big is the group now? Are you allowed to say, or you, do you not I, share that I information? Don't, I don't know why. All the other subscriptions don't. So we're uh, oh, you, generally you just go by the last uh, club bottle that had a number on it. We're not bigger than that. But I don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to. I wouldn't. I wouldn't make time to even work that out. So um, it's over a thousand. No, oh, that's good, isn't it? I mean, that's. Uh, it's not enough to be a proper working business with paying me a wage, but it's more than i expected this would ever be I so it's like so for you, you, you if you've got a target you need to get it to then i've got this idea that three thousand is okay where we we work at our, at our very very best because it allows more other things to happen so yes the subscription is the key thing yeah that, that bottle every two months but yeah. people interact with the club at very at very much different levels we have probably half of our members don't want to talk to me ever yeah they just right. want that bottle to turn up and they want to enjoy it and maybe once a year they go dan well done mm. and that's it and i'm happy with that and then you have through to the ones who want to be at events that want to have single cast bottlings for the club and it's always it's like a percentage, and it drops. It's smaller and smaller percentage. It's more specialist you do. I think at three thousand, we get the option to do almost anything we want. Yeah. Like we want to do a tour of Scotland. We will have enough people to turn up to make it uh, financially viable. We want to do a single cask. We have enough people who will buy into that single cask. I'm not left with two hundred bottles on the shelf. Yeah. Mm. club can't afford to have that cash flow hole like dreaming uh, the next big thing for Somerton what is it you want to do you got oh, so you mentioned no. single cask well no you there's mentioned... not one there's so many bits go on then list I some of them I I think about this every day this is my fun <laughs> this is really geeky and sad yeah, okay. it? but it's, I, I really enjoy thinking about stuff we can do but I want I want us to be able to do single casks I want our sipping sessions the tasting online tastings to be able to run four to six a year full just of members who want to explore a certain element of whiskey deeper. Uh, I want our our physical festival to be able to run every two years without me having to spend six months figuring out how the fuck I can get people to turn up. <laughs> It, yeah it's, it's just it's easy, these days. you just want things to run reasonably yeah. smoothly so your focus is just on creating the best experience of that certain thing and where we are at the moment is we're just too small for that so you have to put so much more effort into it just working cajoling cajoling stuff moving yeah, along. as opposed yeah. to it being efficient and working at its best mm. we're still just getting to the minimum viable amount and that that's fine because a lot of the stuff we do has never been done before or never been done in our way uh, and that's partly because i get bored really really quickly like we don't you, there's a, if you look at the stuff we've done most stuff doesn't get done more than twice the first one is because i've gone this has got to be doable let's try it out really regret that thought second one <laughs> is going right learn from that now let's make it better yeah. and now i've got it better right. Done um, it now. yeah then just yeah. do something else right that's it and, and I'm, yeah. I'm trying to teach myself to do things longer but yeah you know, I, I want to do it's those extra bits that's where i think our club really will excel there isn't there is an element of truth to that is that even if you yourself have uh, are thinking about the next thing you have to remember that for a lot of people they are actually just enjoying the place that you've got to and so you need to stay in that place for a while um i think that's one of the things that you know um you know i like to come up with new wacky ideas as well and so i sort of appreciate that right and maybe just the place you've got to people are just happy for you to be there and you shouldn't move it along too quickly or just go completely Sometimes. out of it and go like to Kishi's castle with whiskey that's what i'm seeing yeah <laughs> 
But Takeshi's that, Castle. <laughs> that, that's the key thing. We have this core bit that stays constant. It's that two months delivery. It's the group on Facebook. Discord's not as interactive, but it's that chat. And everyone has a nice safe space to do whiskey. And then it's the extra bits. That's the bit. Yeah, but did you hear what Mike was saying? I think what Mike was actually saying is in order to get into Summerton Club, you would have to go through a Takeshi Castle style TV show. (laughs) And if you make it through, only then can you sign up and be a part of the Summerton Club. And you would be the Japanese game master dressed in in the thing. And then other Summerton Club members who are already in. like They get to push the walls and hit people and stuff. Yeah, they'll be pushing the walls and shooting the guns from the sideline and firing the tennis balls at people. That could be a new summer festival. Yeah, that's that's Done. it. That's it. You're wrapped up. If you're an existing Just, member, you get to beat the crap yeah. out of people. Well, easy. It's, it's, it's all soft. It's all soft. No one's ever got. No one's ever got hurt on Takeshi's Fair Castle, right. other than maybe their emotions. <laughs> right. you, you know, like the history of Japanese reality <laughs> TV. Yeah. You've never heard of any disasters at all. Nope. It's like nope. it, wipe. Do you remember Wipeout or Total Wipeout? Whatever. Yes. In Argentina, so they didn't have to deal with UK law. Yeah. Too much health and safety. That was a great game show, though, to be fair. Yeah. 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 My, my mate was going, what we do is we'll set up a wipeout game in the UK for people to know. So the one with all the insurance that... and health and safety, they have to do in, Austra- in Argentina. Yeah. Do, you think do you remember that bit with the three safer? the three kind of mushroom things where they have to run yes. along and they'd be like... Oh, and, the wipeout. That, that was the best bit. That was the best bit. And... The like one in a hundred or one in five hundred shows where somebody would actually make it across them fast, not slowly, or when people would go for it like at full so speed. So they turn into contortion experts because their body <laughs> just bends in shapes that it should not. I'm post post this even now or tomorrow morning just to sort of zhush myself up. I'm going to watch all of the wipeouts <laughs> from that just back to back. Just gonna I'm going to find a montage. I'm going to get out. <laughs> that was classic TV. It's it's when you fold someone in half that backwards their feet have gone over their head yeah. when they back heel their nose yeah <laughs> and then they hit they hit the wall like a 45 45 degree angle at speed here yeah. first and then they're picking them up you sometimes get the picture of them going yeah yeah afterwards <laughs> yeah well done. oh what now an image what an image yeah, yeah. That's good. well so we need, obviously we have to have some sort of wrap up so um Wipeout show. Yeah. Whiskey. Yeah. I think to to well, Kishu's Castle Wipeout Summerton Club is where we need to end this. That's a it's a very happy memory that or a, a vision that's in my head at the well, moment. I think uh, we're our, not hitting higher. Our first, our first As, whiskey festival was a bit like that because it was on the hottest day of the year. <laughs> and it you just like literally it, you can't drink that much whiskey at 30 something degrees you can well you can and we did i was so worried about it one guy actually collapsed was his name paul is this one paul paulino from sunderland is this jan is this the one that i went to with the dog no it's uh 2019 oh i didn't go to that one it it was a lot hotter that ours was a nice day that way was hot and uh, luckily, because that was my big worry, something's going to go wrong. No, no, so I spent the entire morning just putting up signs, drink water, and put, we had empty casks filled with water so that people could fit, like just water every stand, every table, every step you walked. Mm. And this guy still collapsed. And I was so mortified. Luckily, he was with his two sons. So he was he was in his like 50s. And his sons went, oh, don't worry. He does this every week. Oh. God. I'm like, one, oh dear. That, 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 that's a certain trait yeah. that needs to be addressed. And two, fuck. Yeah. But three, we found our contestant for Takeshi's Castle. <laughs> he's, he's, he's now, he, he's head, uh, head member. He, he's the one who gets to decide the endurance task. Yeah. Uh, we, we, um, so, Thank you so much for listening to the podcast today. Um, as always, uh, if you like the podcast, uh, give us a review, uh, follow us online, follow Summerton Club, follow Black Fox Distillery. Yeah. All the good uh, stuff. Honest to a malt. Yeah. Yeah. That's us. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dan, thank you again for coming on. It's been wicked. And yeah, thank you for bringing the, the Canadians, Annie. Uh, it's been a blast. But yeah, thank you very much. And uh, thanks for listening. And we'll see you on the next one. 
Yeah. Thanks, guys, for having me. It's been such a great evening. Lovely. Oh, you're welcome, Dan. Thanks for coming on. I knocked my microphone off. Right. Bye, bye, bye. Yeah, I've got red cord going at the moment. Very nice. Right, Duncan, what have you lined up? I've written it on the screen. We'll okay. just do that and then we'll do some Richard Hand questions if you want. Okay. It's, have you got the yeah, music? Let's try this. No. Uh, okay, we're going to. No, no we're going to do this badly. It's, it goes Summer Drams Drifting Away to our old Summerton. Whiskey, whiskey, huh? Tell me more, tell me more. The punters put up a fight. Uh huh. That's it. That's That's all it is. Go on then. You you can just yeah, count us in, Dan Kimball. Just join never... in. Right, maybe you two join in with a whiskey, whiskey, huh? Right. Yeah. Better. Do we get to drop One, out at the end of three? three. Summer drams drifting away to our oh Summerton. A oh, whiskey, whiskey, huh? Whiskey, whiskey. Oh, <laughs> you went. What <laughs> the <laughs> fucking tempo <laughs> were you going to, mate? Do you know what? Don't worry about it. I'll get someone who knows what they're doing to record it, and we'll put it in retrospectively. <laughs>